Hey there, Louis Acabalis here. Thanks for stopping by. In this video, I am going to show you how to use the recently released Microsoft Teams Games for Work app. Now, before we get started, if you find this video helpful, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date on the latest tutorials that I publish. Now let's go ahead and let's get started. Now, earlier this year, Microsoft announced that it was going to be adding games to the Microsoft Teams platform in an effort to help organizations promote teamwork and collaboration in this age of hybrid work. Earlier this week, Microsoft announced that they released the Games for Work app that allows users to play games in the context of Microsoft Teams meetings. Now, at the time of release, there are currently four games that users can play in Microsoft Teams, but it's pretty obvious that Microsoft is going to expand that library, and it's very likely that Microsoft will also allow third-party publishers to release games in both the free-to-play and paid format. Now, to use the Microsoft Teams Games for Work app, what you want to do is you want to schedule a meeting, and then you wanna right-click on the meeting that you've scheduled. You want to click on the Edit Menu option, and you want to click on the add a tab button at the top of the meeting invitation. Now you can search for and select games for work to add it to your meeting. You can see here it's displayed in the list of apps in the first row. So I'll go ahead and click on this. And this is going to bring up a window that is asking you to confirm that you want to add this app to the meeting. Now you'll notice here this toggle that says featured I have tested turning this on and off and it doesn't really change anything with respect to the application. I believe that again, over time, Microsoft is going to allow third parties to publish apps that can be used in the context of meetings. And this toggle here will likely just elevate the featured apps, either ones that are published by Microsoft or other promoted apps that Microsoft is trying to get in front of users. Now I'll go ahead and click save. And you can see here that the Games for Work tab has been added to this meeting. Now, you don't have to add this app to the meeting before the meeting starts. You can also just add this to the meeting while you are actually in the meeting in real time. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove this tab by clicking on the drop down and clicking Remove. Then I'll go ahead and click Remove again. And now I'm gonna go ahead and join this meeting. And you can see here that once I'm in the meeting, if I wanna add the Games for Work app to the meeting, I can click on the add an app button. And again, that's going to bring up the app catalog. You can see here the Games for Work option and you can go ahead and click on this. And then again, you can click save and it's going to add this app to the meeting. Now, once you're in the meeting and you activate this app, you can see here that what it does is it displays it in a menu option that is embedded in the meeting window on the right hand side. Now you'll see here that this app includes four different games. Now these games are all intended to be played either individually in the context of a meeting or collaboratively with between two to 250 other participants. Now, unfortunately, you cannot play these games in teams outside of the meeting. In order to use this app, it has to be done in a meeting. Now, in order to start one of these games, what you want to do is go ahead and select the game that you want to play. So in this case, I'll click on Solitaire. Now you can see here that you have several different types of games that you can play even within these games. So for example, within Solitaire, you have different variations here that you can play just by clicking on one of these options. You can also see a list of the participants that have joined your game in the menu at the bottom here. So you can see there's two players. And if I hover my cursor over one of the other players, I can either remove them from the game or I can make them a host. I also want to draw your attention to the fact that there is a mute button, which will mute the audio associated with the game that you're playing. And you can also click into the game options. And here you can change things like the themes, there's game settings, including sound effects, uh, graphics mode, et cetera. So you do have some sub options within the specific game itself. Now what's really cool is the games also provide instructions on how to actually play them. I'm not gonna be covering that in this tutorial. Now I'll go ahead and start this game. Now you can see here that the game is being displayed in the window. 
Now, I have joined this game as the other participant and they are seeing the exact same thing. It's as if someone is sharing their screen. Now, if you are hosting the game, you can close this games for work menu just by clicking on the X button. That's gonna give you a little bit of additional real estate. And if you wanna bring it back into your meeting window, perhaps you wanna switch the game, you just wanna click on the games for work tab in the menu action bar at the top of the screen. Now, if you wanted to switch to another game, you can do that by just placing your cursor over the game that you wanna play, and then you wanna go ahead and click on that game. Now you can see here I've selected Minesweeper and it is going to give me this prompt saying that another game is currently being played. Do you wanna play this game instead? I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. And you can see here that I have now switched from Solitaire to Minesweeper. Now this is also going to change the active game that is being displayed to the other meeting participants. So on my other computer that I'm running, as soon as I switched over to Minesweeper, that is what I see on my other computer. That is what other meeting participants are also going to see. Now you'll also notice that even though I switched to Minesweeper, I can still switch back to the active game of Solitaire. So you can see it still says in progress. And if I click on the more options button, then I can go ahead and choose to end these games. So important note, you can actually jump between different games and still move back into one of the previous ones. Now I'll just go ahead and click on the play game button again and click continue. And you're gonna see here that it is going to bring Solitaire back into the meeting window. And you can see here that it actually resumed the previous game that we had started. So that's pretty cool that you can kind of jump around from game to game. Now, if I want to end a game again, I can just click on the more options button and click end game. That's going to give me the confirmation prompt. I'll go ahead and click end game and it is going to end that game completely. All right, now the last question that I will answer is can you access the Games for Work app in breakout rooms in Teams meetings? Now you can see here that I've gone ahead and created a breakout room. I have two breakout rooms set up in this meeting and currently only one of them is open. Now I have gone ahead and joined that breakout room here. Now you'll see at the very top of the menu bar, you have the add an app button. And if I click on it, you can see here that the games for work app is available. And if I click on this, I can go ahead and use this app the same way that we did in the primary meeting room. So again, this is a really cool tool to help you facilitate perhaps team building activity or you know icebreakers for large meetings where you can either use the app in the meeting or even in breakout rooms. And again, one of the major limitations associated with this app is that it supports between two to 250 participants at the time that this app was released. All right, now as a bonus, I am going to quickly demonstrate that you can also use the Games for Work app on the Microsoft Teams mobile application. Now this app does function the exact same on mobile, which is really fantastic. Now you can see here I've joined this meeting and I'm gonna click on the More Actions button. Now you can also see that at the bottom of this screen, it shows that the app has been added into this meeting as we saw earlier. In order to bring up the Games for Work app after you've added it to your meeting, you want to go ahead and click on that text that reads one app added in meeting. Then you wanna click on the Games for Work app and you can see here that the app is loading and what's really cool is that it's going to display all of the games that are available to be played and it's also going to show the games that are currently in progress. Now I've gone ahead and clicked on the play button and you can see here that it is going to load Microsoft Minesweeper exactly as we saw when we were doing this using the desktop application. And you can go ahead and just play these games right from your mobile device, which is awesome. Now this tutorial was recorded on an Android based device. I have not tested the app on iOS myself, but I have read that it is expected to function the exact same. So that's it. In this tutorial, I showed you how to use the Microsoft Teams Games for Work app on both desktop and mobile. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest tutorials that I publish. I'm Louis Acabalas. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.